Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of this series on creating games using Construct 2. In part two we took a look at just adding sprites to our game and now in part three we're gonna look at adding behaviors to to our sprite objects. So what behaviors do is they give um, some predefined logic, logic to uh, whatever object you add it to. So let me switch over to Construct 2. We can take a look at what I'm talking about. Uh, the first behavior we're going to look at is the platform behavior and platform behavior you would typically apply to your player and what the platform behavior does is it gives um, it gives your player gravity it gives him the ability to move left and right with the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard and then it gives him the, the ability to jump using the up arrow so let me select my player over here under my objects uh, pane and I can add behaviors in a couple of different ways. If I have him selected, I can come over to the left where the properties pane is and I can click the, uh, the button that says behaviors. Or I could actually right click on the player and choose behaviors there. Either way is fine. And once I do, I get this little pop-up box and I can click this add new button to add a new behavior. And I've got a lot here. We won't cover them all, but we're gonna cover, cover two or three here today. Um, if I scroll all the way down, I've got the platform behavior. So go ahead and select that one, and I'll click Add, and I can X this out. And now if we take a look back at the Properties window for our player object, we've got some new properties here. So we've got some new properties here associated with the platform behavior. We've got Speed, Acceleration, Deceleration, Jump Strength, Gravity, Max Fall Speed, Default Controls. You can switch that to Yes or No. Um, so these are pretty straightforward. Your max speed is going to be how fast you can go. Acceleration, how fast you accelerate. You can change these numbers um, as often as you want. So let's take a look at, let me uh, click this run layout button up here and take a look at what that did for our game. And I want, let me bring this page over here. All right, let me refresh this. Now we should see because of gravity, our player just falls, right? Not too exciting yet. And you might wonder why he falls through these platforms that we created. Well, the platform behavior for our player tells it to only land, to only stop, if it lands on a solid object. So all of these platforms need to have the solid behavior, and that one's pretty straightforward. Um, so if I select players on the right under the objects pane and come over to behaviors, and I'll click add again, and then let's see, solid is at the top right. Let me add that one and X this out. And there's not really many properties here, just whether or not your, uh, your solid behavior is enabled. So we want it to be enabled so we can land on it. So let's, let's take a look and run this again. And now my player falls. Let's see, let's refresh that just in case you missed it. So the player falls, he lands on the object. I can move left and right and I can jump up and down and across to these different platforms. One thing you might notice, however, is if I jump from beneath a platform, I can't jump through it. So depending on how you want to structure your game, that may or may not be the way that you want it. If you want to be able to jump through the platforms, there is a jump through behavior. So instead of the solid behavior, you could just use the jump through. So just to kind of show that off, I'm going to come back into the behaviors for the platform. I'm going to take away the solid behavior and then I'm going to come in and add the jump through. There's top left, and exit out, and I'll run the game again. And let me refresh. So there's our player. He can still jump, jump across like we used to and now if you see he can jump from beneath a platform and land on top of it. Cool. So again any of those um, any of those uh, let's see properties for um, these behaviors can be changed. So I can change my max speed to 500, my acceleration to 2000 and then my jump strength let's change it to 900. So we should see him moving a little bit faster, accelerating a little bit faster and jumping a little higher. So let me bring back over my page and refresh it for you. 
Now I'm moving a little faster, I'm jumping a little higher, you might notice, and I still have the ability to jump through these different platforms. So one other behavior we can add to our platform um, objects is the sign behavior. And this is base, based on like a sine wave. So what it's used for is having things move back and forth. So let's come over to behaviors again for the platform and add a behavior. And let's choose, I'm going to search for it up top. And it's called sine, S-I-N-E. So I'll add that one and I get these properties over here on the left for the sign behavior and it's got movement can be horizontal vertical and then a couple of other things uh, I'm just gonna do the horizontal and vertical for now uh, the wave can be a couple of different things sign triangle um, a couple of other options then there's the period and the magnitude that we can change so the lower the period the faster it's gonna move the higher the magnitude, the longer distance it's going to move. So let's go ahead and run our game again now that we have this sign behavior. Let me pull it over here again. I should remember to just leave it up. Let me refresh and now you should see that all these platforms are moving side to side. Remember we had a horizontal check. So let me minimize that. And then let's just change, let's change them to vertical, or actually let's leave them a horizontal for now. Let's change the period to one, which should make them move faster. And then let's change the magnitude to 100, which should make them move a greater distance horizontally. So now let's run again and take a look at what that looks like now. So now they're moving a lot faster, moving a longer distance. And now when I start trying to jump around these platforms, it's a little trickier, maybe even too much. So let me, I'm going to go right in the middle and move these numbers kind of in the middle from where they were and where they are now. And one thing to keep in mind with these platform properties is that if we select this platform object under the objects pane and change these properties, that changes and selects all of these uh, platform instances that we have. If we come into the layout and select a specific instance of the platform object, and we change some of those be, uh, properties. So let me come in and select and make some of these vertical. Just a few of them. And let me run the layout again. We should see that some of the platforms are moving horizontally, some of them are moving vertically, and that's just based on us changing the properties for those different ones. And so now I can jump around still some of them moving up and down, some of them moving left or right. Pretty straightforward, but just keep in mind that you can either change these properties for all of them at one time by selecting the platform object in the objects pane, or you can select the properties for one instance of an object by selecting one of the instances within the layout. All right, so that concludes um, an intro to some of the different behaviors that we have access to, and stay tuned for part four.